I'm not saying I don't like weed and beer, because I definitely like weed and beer, but I'm also not the type to be like, fuck yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah, it's uh-huh. Miller time, bitch. <laughs> Welcome back, party people, to another edition of the first cut, an episodic journey through the sonic underground of today. Now put the kids down for a nap, open up a bottle of the good stuff, and sit tight, because it's about to get weird. Seriously, this is not for kids. You've been properly warned. What's up, party people of the world? You're back on the first cut uh, with Danny and uh, special dress, special dress, special guest uh, Drake today. What's up, Drake? How you doing? I'm doing okay. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, Drake is subbing in for Evan today, who uh, had some some family issues and couldn't uh, couldn't make it over. But that's okay. Because Drake is a good friend of a f- uh, friend of ours and a friend of the podcast, and we are here today with uh, Grindcore, and we're gonna waste no time getting into it. Oh, excuse me, real quick. Let me go ahead and refresh the dang old page. We're gonna waste no time getting into our first pick, uh, Regional Justice Center, and uh, start talking about it. Drake, how you been, buddy? We had you on for uh, for the uh, the first Grindcore episode, but that was. Uh, quite a long time ago yeah yeah been been all right that's good hanging out <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> well thanks for stopping by everybody no <laughs> all right see you yeah yeah have a good night um yeah no no just just living life 365 eh? yeah yeah i don't know not much to say on that front just yeah. normal shit since i probably saw you guys last just working and i don't know hanging yeah. out and listening to shit like this yeah, fair. I mean, I think the last time... God damn, I'm trying to remember if Evan was there, but the last time I remember seeing you was uh, October of 2019, I want to say, and we were getting together for one of our uh, uh, biannual movie nights. Uh-huh. Um, we were watching... Was it Four Flies on Grey Velvet? Yeah. Is that the name of it? Yeah. yeah. yeah I have really like good memory about some shit like that. But... Uh, yeah. Anyways, we can totally talk about that more later. But we are here today with grindcore. Uh, grindcore is one of those weird genres, and we've talked about it before. That I think a lot of people have an idea and an expectation of what it is, and that's very different than what it actually is. Because um, I think people think of grindcore and they think more of like power violence. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? They're just like, oh yeah, it's just noisy, screaming, I mean, grindy, certainly, but just intense, rapid. I think people typically either think of like deathcore or power violence, which is way off. Uh-huh. Well, not power violence so much, but uh-huh. it's different. I mean, you know, obviously. Yeah. Um, but we have three great picks today. The first pick we have is Regional Justice Center. Uh, and I'll definitely let Drake talk more about them because he knows more than I do. Uh, but they either are or were based out of Seattle, Washington. And this uh, LP, LP? It is an LP, right? Yeah. yeah. Came out uh, in March of this year. So it is a very recent release. Mm. And it's very good for people that like this sort of thing. It is a thing that you might enjoy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned the power violence thing because. I kind of put this more in the category of sure. like hardcore and power violence. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of was like definitely on the fence of even a fringe like, pick. Yeah, yeah, mentioning these guys, but I mean, it's definitely blasty enough to really justify like throwing it within the realm for sure of yeah. uh, grind or at least grind adjacent. But uh, yeah, a lot of chunky riff stuff. You know, but it's a little more prevalent and hardcore. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, these guys are really good. I I'd, uh, I'd heard about this album, and uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I just I didn't really think much of. Uh, I don't. I'd seen the album cover and name around and uh, like 
Decibel and some other publications. Right. And uh, something about that album cover and name just was like a little different. Oh, I and, love uh, the album cover. Yeah. yeah. It's phenomenal. And so, I don't know, I checked it out and uh, I wasn't really sure what to think like going in, but like first, second I heard it, I was like, oh, this is fucking tight. And, yeah, it's very good. Very, very good. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> on that point of uh, uh, being from Seattle, Washington, whatever, so they were, they were, it seems from what I've looked into uh, with them is that they were at first based in uh, Washington and essentially, uh, and that's where they actually get the name Regional Justice Center. Oh, really? Of, uh, yeah, so the... I'm not sure who exactly in the band, but a member in the, of this band uh, named the band Regional Justice Center after, uh, so his brother is actually currently incarcerated okay. in uh, the Regional Justice Center that's in Washington that's like either in Seattle or like, I, I almost want to say Yelm or Yakima, that, that might be totally off, but, uh, yeah, yeah. and yeah. kind of there's like a lot of commentary within the lyrics and like some of the samples even used of uh, basically about his brother's incarceration and like just kind of how like jacked the whole fucking like legal system it is, it is and whatnot right, right. but he uh, and how hard it's like been on his family and like dealing with having someone that you care about in uh, jail, so I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. <clears throat> well, it's fascinating too because, like, I mean, while I've certainly never been to prison by any means, um, and of course, I, I should say, make it a huge point, I do not know the members of this band. Um, I'm not familiar with them, so I'm certainly not speaking on uh, any of them or the people that of whom they may be related to. But just as a general statement, it is it is kind of fascinating how, like, um, in a lot of cases, crimes are kind of treated in a blanket sense, especially if you are... Um, I don't know how better to say it, because, you know, we try not to be super, super political on this podcast, but it's also, like, we're talking about grindcore, and grindcore yeah. is a pretty fucking political genre. Right. So, um, when you are not white, how you're treated significantly yeah. differently than if you are, because um, I know that's obviously a big thing that's super prevalent in this country, and right. even was in the state for a very long time, is, like... Uh, minor possession charges that you'd be like, oh, I had like a, a fucking half ounce of marijuana or whatever. It's like, oh, you're going to prison for life. Yeah. For pot. Uh. And it's it's just fascinating to see how like there there's such a dichotomy between something like that and like, oh, I killed three people. And yeah. Like, oh, well, that's gonna be, you know, eight years. Like uh. eight years. Uh. What the fuck? Uh. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like it's I, I don't know. It's just it's fascinating how there can be such a uh, gross difference in uh, uh, judgment as it pertains to different people, different classes, and different this and that and whatever. Um, yes, certainly, there's a lot of issues with the American judicial system, um, and it's cool to talk about them sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love talking about prison. I love talking about politics. <laughs> Mitch McConnell is a cunt. <laughs> but uh Yeah, um Yeah, prison's gotta be the happiest fucking thing to talk about. Drugs, prison, fucking okay, um Yeah, yeah, no. But uh Grind Corps pretty tight. This music is pretty good for sure. I really like it. Um I really want to know. I want to see. Because I, I enjoy this album cover, but I haven't looked at... Oh, okay, okay. Now I'm looking a little closer. And it looks kind of like... Uh, almost like a, um, a Tyvek suit under, like, a suit <laughs> with running shoes and kind of like a... Um, God damn it. What is the term for that kind of mask? I don't know. It looks like a really, like, old-school Halloween mask. Yeah, like, yeah. Some of the, like, <clears throat> fucking, like... 
I don't know, 30s or 50s, like Halloween mask you'll see. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, God, this groove is fucking awesome. But I love too that it's like it's like running from a collapsing carnival with a bag full of money. Yeah. Yeah, that's fascinating. Uh, anyways, so grindcore is cool. Um, I think uh, I think it is very interesting, and I think we talked about this last time. The kind of the the difference between um, how grindcore is often viewed as a metal genre, and it kind of is, yeah. but it's really much more rooted in like hardcore and punk, typically. Well, fuck this. I mean, just looking at this, this I would not like consider. <laughs> This, I mean, this just sounds like straight hardcore. Yeah, like, it doesn't yeah. sound. I mean, it, it but so that's what's fun, I guess, is yeah. like talking to people that aren't like as richly versed in the difference. Is yeah. I think, I think a good, a good ninety nine percent of non metal listeners at least will yeah. hear this and go, "Of course, this is metal." Yeah, and even a lot of metal listeners and more of the. Um, uh, extreme genres would probably feel similar yeah. but yeah I hear this and I don't hear metal at all uh, yeah um, not the album necessarily but certainly that song and most most of it I yeah. hear maybe metal overtones but generally yeah, it doesn't sound like metal at all right. um, but it's so fascinating I guess to listen to something like this and then listen to like Metallica and be like oh so you think those are like similar right yeah you know what I mean <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't know. And granted, obviously, metal is a super diverse uh, genre with many, 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 many mm-hmm. subgenres, just as punk and hardcore mm-hmm. are. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of fascinating to just, um, um, I guess, to be in the position to be able to see the distinctions more clearly. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, more um, immersed in that world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, that's one thing I'll say I've been really glad for this podcast is being able to not only discover so many phenomenal artists that I never would have otherwise, but to be able to understand music as a whole better. Yeah. And be able to, for that matter, too, because I know not that long ago, I don't know if you heard the episode or not, but we did an episode on country. Uh Uh-huh. And there's very few genres that has a greater whole. I'd be like, man, I fucking hate that genre. <laughs> but country is one of uh-huh. them. So to say, well, you know, let's let's try and put a country list together. Let's let's take a genre that neither of us particularly like yeah. and see if we can't find something redeemable in it to yeah. find things that we would want to say, hey, this is good, you should listen to it. And then do that. Mm. It's pretty refreshing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's one thing I love about doing the show is, um, if for nothing else, expanding my musical palette. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Mm. Pretty cool thing we do. That being said, as much as I could listen to this shit for quite a while, huh. uh, I think we are running out of track to work with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is a pretty short one. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not my, even sure if it gets past yeah. the 20-minute mark. I mean, that's a... Yeah, this is the last track, so... <laughs> um, um, probably a good dang old time to uh, start wrapping up on this artist and go to the next one. How do you feel about that? Yeah, that's cool. Oh, yeah. So thank you, Regional Justice Center. Um, and we'll see you back in a few moments. And we're on with our second pick. People. 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 Okay. I thought we lost you there for a second. I heard the beeping come to an end. We're back here with Head Brain Blockade. The album is Destruction of Principle of Life. Yeah, Destruction yeah, of Principle of Life. I'm mm-hmm. like, what the fuck is tape CD? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, let's go ahead and get started with uh, Russian word meaning intro. I don't know how to speak <laughs> Russian, but this band is Russian, apparently. It, is, it says that they're from the russian federation um so drake you introduced me actually you introduced me to all of these artists huh. thank, thank you for that by the way <laughs> no problem yeah, makes my job really easy um what uh what do you think of this uh this pick yeah no i really uh so i haven't listened to this album a shitload but uh funnily enough i had uh just put uh was washing dishes the other day and was like uh 
So this label, No Bread Records, you can uh, actually buy their entire digital discography on Bandcamp, like for really cheap. Like I think it's under twenty bucks, and they have a a lot, a hundred and forty-one releases yeah, yeah. under their belt. So uh, I picked that up because there's some stuff I uh, dug listening to, uh, just checking out the different releases they had. But uh, it seems like primarily they're more of a grind, power violence, crust-centric label. And uh, anyhow, so I just kind of picked this band out of a hat, out of all the releases I had got from them, and uh, I really enjoyed this. It's, yeah. uh, it's, I don't know if I'd say crazy musically reminiscent of me, or... Of you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of uh It sounds just like what I do. Yeah, yeah. But uh it vocally there's like a lot of uh stuff I like that kinda reminds me of like uh like when Barney first joined Napalm Death. Like oh yeah. Some of the low sure. lower shit and then It's very guttural, yeah. Yeah. But uh a lot of cool different vocal shit on this album but yeah the music's really good and i enjoy too in this album uh with the drums fucking there will be certain times where you can like hear the drummer like hitting the rim of his snare during his blast and i don't know it's like it's just like one of those imperfection things you'll hear as a drummer that normally you don't hear on records much anymore snare shots can be pretty pretty rough yeah, yeah yeah and so it's like it's something i enjoy that they like included of like this sounds like a you know real drum set i mean i could maybe believe that there's triggers or something on the bass drum maybe but right. uh, i don't know it's just like it, it's refreshing to hear that when like so many recordings are kind of sanitized you know yeah definitely um that was a big thing i remember when um when Evan and I were kind of like um, <clears throat> listening to progressive more and more and starting to like progressive metal uh-huh. and starting to kind of like dissect it was he would often compare the tones of like dream theater yeah. against um, tones of a band like between the buried me. And one thing I remember he would say a lot was like uh, how much appreciation he had for Between the Buried Me's Great Misdirect album uh-huh. because the guitar tones on that album are like so fucking dirty. Uh-huh. Like they're they're not clean, they're right. not scrubbed and yeah, perfect. Yeah. And I mean granted, I know a lot of people would hear that and then like compare that to this and be like, that's ah, pretty fucking perfect by <laughs> comparison. But but when you listen to something like like um well granted, I mean a lot of metal metal in general has become so over compressed and oversaturated in the tone that uh-huh. like I, I've complained about this a lot in my personal life. I don't know if I've complained about it a lot on here, but um most metal guitarists you listen to sound the same these mm-hmm. days. Like if you if you go on YouTube and you go, Oh, I wanna listen to so and so from so and so, the tone of that guitarist most likely is going to sound like 50 other fucking relatively similar bands yeah because they're doing the exact same shit uh. the exact same equalization the exact same presets this uh. that and whatever to make their shit sound fucking homogeneously uh. the same and that's not to say that they're not talented guitarists and that they you know don't deserve respect and everything but the tone is so fucking sterile yeah it's bananas and uh yeah, I don't know. I definitely can appreciate too um, listening to something that is that is legitimately imperfect, mm. um, and appreciate that definitely. Yeah. Well, I'll say too with this, it's like it's not even like this production's <laughs> like it's on, it's honestly pretty fucking good production. Like yeah. I feel like I can imperfect hear doesn't well. mean bad. Yeah, 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 by yeah any exactly. Means. No, and like that's why it, just like one. I don't know, you'll hear, like, recording shit kind of obsessed, like, over, like, not getting certain sounds, and I don't know, just, like, being a drummer, too, it's, like, fucking being able to hear some of, like, the stick clicks and shit on this, I'm like, yeah, that's tight. That kind of reminds me, um, I know you're very familiar with the band, 
But uh, I had showed you the song mm-hmm. by Converge. Um, I believe it's called I Can Tell You About Pain. Okay. And uh, I remember that Kurt Blue had done a session on it where he was like breaking down like uh, here's how everything was recorded and equalized and this and that, whatever. Uh-huh. And one of the big things he talks about is uh, is amp noise. Yeah. Because like um, you know, there's a few parts throughout that song and through Converge is uh-huh. like library in general yeah. where he'll like let the feedback of the amp like mm-hmm. scream out and that's yeah. something you hear in this a whole whole lot. Uh-huh. And he said, you know, I get the question a lot to ask, like, how do you control the tone of your feedback and, like, you know, say, like, like this is the note that I want to get and this and that, whatever. And he said, you kind of can't. Yeah. And you kind <laughs> of just want to get what you get uh-huh. and, you know, like, work with what sounds good. Yeah. And it's funny how, like, much shit in the music industry is just kind of like oh I didn't mean to do that but it sounded good so I'm yeah. going to keep it huh. like happy accidents as I like to call them yeah. just like uh, oh yeah no I mean that's not usually what I play but let's fucking keep it or uh, just even like yeah my uh, my amp is having this issue but it actually it actually does sound really good mm-hmm. I think we're just going to go with that and uh the idea of being like, nope, 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 nope. It's got to be perfect. It's got to yeah. be the way we rehearsed it. Or this, yeah. It's just, I don't know. You're going to miss out on a lot of fucking life yeah. if that's the way that you go about yeah. recording everything. Well, that's the beauty of being in a band and like yeah, learning sure. an instrument and everything. Is that what, what I appreciate about that compared to, and this is not a diss to anyone, whatever, who's oh. like doing DJ stuff or stuff through a computer or whatever like because i whatever i'm cool with all ways of people wanting to make music i'm but, hip i'm happening no. <laughs> but, uh, but it's like the idea of being in a band what i think i enjoy the most about it and like seeing live music is that at any point it could fall off the rails oh totally if someone breaks a fucking string if someone drops a drumstick something like that it's like yeah yeah. this is it's such a time and a moment of everything you know rehearsal and just shit going right but at any point if you know there's one spark there something going wrong it could and it's like so I get understanding. I think it's kind of fun being in a live experience too, not to cut you off, but being in a live experience and seeing things that aren't good <laughs> that yeah. you didn't yeah. expect. Uh, well, I, uh, yeah, funny enough, like uh, I remember uh, I was talking with Evan a while ago. The first Between the Buried Me concert we went to out of, I don't know, seven or eight that we've uh, fucking gone to. <laughs> Um, no, it's probably not that many, but it was several. Uh-huh. The first one we went to was when they were touring their Parallax 1 EP. Uh-huh. And one of the bands that opened was uh, Cephalic Carnage. Oh, nice. What? <laughs> and I'm, yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of Cephalic Carnage, yeah, yeah. personally, but uh-huh. I do remember a lot of their um, banter was like... <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Kind of cringe, in my opinion. Oh, shit. Okay. I was like, ugh. <laughs> And we talked about this on the last podcast because I remember, like, uh, God, I can't think for the life of me who the lead vocalist of Savala Carnage is. <laughs> yeah, but fuck he, I know. he came out, and I remember he was like, This song is about uh, eating cheesecake in your basement and jacking off. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I was like, All right, all right, cool, cool. And uh, he comes out, and he's like, Who? this audience likes weed and like pumps his fist in the yeah. air and a bunch of people cheer and he's like all right who likes beer pumps the opposite <laughs> left fist there's cheering he's like all right weed oh beer weed be- and i'm like well dog this is this is not my circle for yeah. sure and i'm not saying i don't like weed and beer because i definitely like weed and beer but i'm also not the type of like fuck yeah, yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. fuck yeah it's uh-huh. miller time bitch <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, I it's just I remember eating cheesecake in your basement and jacking <laughs> off. That's I'll never forget that. Oh, dude! <laughs> Holy shit! It was quite a scene. Um, but uh, goddamn, dude! I think of so many fucking bands that I've seen throughout the year. I uh, I went to a concert with someone. 
Yeah, I, I want to talk more about this off the fucking mic because it's <laughs> sure. it's a fun story overall, right. but it's not something that I want necessarily on the airwaves. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of bands. I don't think I'd heard of a single fucking band on the record. He's like, uh, oh, we should go. You know, we should hang out. We should go to this concert. And I was like, oh, okay. And we went. And I remember there was um, a band called like Expedition Earth, I believe. Uh-huh. Uh, there's like Aether, and there's a lot of like um, it was it was a big deathcore show. Okay. And I don't have anything against deathcore. Yeah. It's not really my my vibe, uh-huh. so I felt kind of like a fish out of water. But it was a fun concert. Mm-hmm. But I remember there was a lot of like um, God, what is the term? Kind of like slam bands. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where it's like this song is 90% breakdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like uh-huh. okay, uh-huh. <laughs> sweet. Uh-huh. I really hope I don't leave here with a broken neck. Yeah, yeah. Um, the one thing I have to say, and granted, I'm probably going to catch shit for this, but that's okay. I'll, I'll accept the shit that I catch for this. The one thing with going to those specific types of shows that I can't fucking stand, and maybe you're on this, maybe you're not, is like the windmillers. Yeah. Uh. That's the shit, like the people that they're like, hell yeah, man, I'm going to flail my body around and mm. maybe I hit a bunch of people or maybe uh. I don't. As I'm like, that's pretty fucking lame. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's weird with that. It's because, I don't know, like, because uh, that seems to be more of, I, if I'm getting you correct, like people were like fucking, you know, like whatever crowd killing or like fucking... Uh, I don't know, flailing their limbs and shit around, not like yeah, like yeah. headbanging whatever. No, nope, exactly. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. No, they're literally like swinging their arms and legs yeah, yeah. around, like they're doing like fucking roundhouse kicks right. and yeah. flailing their arms yeah, around. It's, it's a weird thing because like I've been to some more like hardcore type shows where it's like it's interesting because that's definitely more that kind of world yeah. as compared to metal, and it's like. I'm kind yeah, of yeah, like true. when in Rome a little bit of like I don't I kind like, of am too. I think it's I think it's ow. I think it's strange into each their own like if yeah, that's yeah. how you express yourself then mm-hmm. okay cool. But I think what and I'll say this is this is kind of what I saw at that show and this is uh-huh. more of where I was like what the fuck? Right. Was like there was guys doing that and there's this one guy who's like fuck yeah swinging his arms around kicking uh-huh. and shit and um wasn't that far away from everyone else. Yeah. yeah. And starts like punching fucking other people in mm. the face. Yeah, yeah. And uh one guy got like legit tired of getting punched yeah. like five times. Yeah. And turned around and shoved the fucking guy to <laughs> yeah. be like, get the fuck away from me. Right. And not only did the guy who was punching the other dude in the face go like, what the fuck is your problem? <laughs> but <laughs> The recipient of said face punches got kicked out of the show. Wow. That's fucking lame. Yeah. So imagine somebody's uh, dancing erratically, Uh. wailing on you like a Uh. fucking psychopath, Uh. and then when you get upset about it, they're like, you need to leave because you're a problem. Yeah. And unfortunately, I've seen that kind of thing happen at other shows before, too. So My biggest thing is, I think all of that combined... Mm -hmm. I can't I can't empathize with being that guy. Yeah. And not only not feeling bad about getting that dude kicked out and yeah. wailing on him, but then going pretty much like, man, fuck that guy. I'm gonna keep doing that thing that really <laughs> upset people. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, don't know, no, that's just strange to me. Yeah. No, it's fucking dumb and like I mean, it's weird it's one thing I don't wanna make a whole fucking episode of your deal just about whatever oh no like, it's it's literally about it's literally about whatever we wanted to be yeah about. but uh we can trade fucking uh crumb cake recipes yeah, if you yeah, want. yeah but yeah in short just it you know i respect people who want to whatever do whatever physical shit and stuff at uh at shows that they want to and express themselves how they want to because it's supposed to be fun in the show but yeah. at the same time it's like what are you gonna pay my fucking medical bills if you break my nose like no or and knock it's like, a couple of my teeth out yeah. yeah and it's like 
realistically, dude, like, well, what re kind of money do you see? Realistically, the venue should be liable for that in that case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I won't say what venue that this was at that I saw it happen. Uh -huh. But um, the venue technically should be liable. And because the venue mm -hmm. should be liable, you would think that if they saw that, they'd be like, yeah, going to go ahead and shut that shit down right now. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, because no. it's like the like if uh, you have somebody come over and they step mm. out of their car, slip on something you left at your house, and they break their neck, you're on the line for that. Yeah, now that's very true. <clears throat> um, Jesus. Um, bitches be shopping. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and it's just you know, Eric. I gotta get a few Eric Andre references <laughs> in each time. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. That was uh, when Hannibal hosted, wasn't it? Dude, I I honestly don't. Even I have such a fucking weird thing. memory for shit. Like I don't yeah, know yeah. what the hell it is that yeah. I just I remember the most fucking the tiniest fucking most insignificant yeah. insignificant shit. Yeah. That uh, I, I I I said like wasn't that what it was to be like I don't know I fucking yeah. know yeah. for sure it was. It was the episode that, like, he had hosted where, like, Eric had apparently, like, broken his neck uh. or whatever. And he comes out, and he's like, all right, do a monologue. And he just walks up to the microphone. He goes, so, bitches be shopping. <laughs> and then he, like, wins a fucking award immediately, and he gets carried out. I, I do vaguely remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, um... How do you feel about moving on to our third and final pick? Yeah, yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah. Headbrain Blockade, thank you so much for your... Oh, you motherfucker. For your, uh, for your time. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our last pick. Okay, people. We are here with our third and final pick of the After Dang Diddly Noon. And this is Boss Rotten. I will have Drake explain this one because that is uh, that is a reference that is above my head. Yeah. And so the title track or the the first track, excuse me, the blow off the album Surge. So yeah, it's a uh, it's like a play on words. Um, at least I'm very sure. But of uh, so you have the UFC fighter, whatever famous fighter, uh, Boss Rutten, and then. Uh, the band Os Rotten or whatever, so it's like kind of a play on words of both of those. So gotcha. it's pretty funny, and I fucking enjoy. I have already enjoyed some of uh, Boss Rootin's videos, so that's kind of what uh, led me to checking this band out more. Yeah, it's really tight, real tight mix of like yeah, punk hardcore, whatever crust, grind, power violence. There's like a little bit of like everything for I don't know someone who's into stuff like this it's like, really funny how much this like the imagery and kind of the overall vibe harken, harkens me back to like the days of fucking like Black Flag and Minor Threat yeah yeah totally but, and it's funny because it, it doesn't really sound much like it right. but not to say it doesn't sound like mm -hmm. it at all but it doesn't sound that much like it huh. but it's so hard not to think of those things yeah and then to hear that the music is even like vaguely similar, yeah. it kind of just goes back to the conversation we were having like what fucking five minutes ago about like how the hell do you call this metal? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like right. it's very clearly punk, like oh yeah, not, not punk derivative, but down the the punk bloodline for yes. sure. Yes, no, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I definitely put these guys absolutely more on the punk side yeah, of and things. Yeah, kicks so them. much ass. You know, it's funny you mentioned Black Flag because. Uh, I like Henry Rollins. Like I fucking love Henry Rollins. Dude. Yeah, old school Henry Rollins, like shaved head Henry Rollins, looks so much like Boss Rutten. Oh really? It's fucking hilarious. Oh, like, I didn't know that. That's yeah, crazy. But uh, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of a nonsense. Well, I think back to like the the imagery of the album cover that we're seeing here reminds me a lot. And granted, I. I know fucking probably anybody could just be like, well, because uh, well, they're both boxing themed. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of like my war. Yeah. But, yeah. um, yeah, goddamn, man. Black Flag is so fucking good. Did you ever see, um, Henry Rollins was on, uh, This Is Not Happening? What, what even? Oh, is that, or wait, yeah, what the hell is that? Oh, I'll send that to you. Okay. It's really good. So, This Is Not Happening was a show that was originally hosted by Ari Shakir, comedian. Oh, okay. And the big thing was that he would bring guests on, just tell stories. Essentially, the idea was supposed to be like 
these are pretty fucking unbelievable stories. And more right. often than not, there's comedians that come on. Right. But there's not a reason necessarily that it had to be a comedian as much yeah. as like, this person's good at telling a story. Mm-hmm. Well, if you know anything about Henry Rollins post, what, fucking 1984, right. he's a phenomenal fucking storyteller. Uh-huh. Like, it's like literally what he does yeah, for a living. He's paid now. to talk. He's, he gets <laughs> paid to go around and talk about life and be like, this is what's wrong with the world and this is... God damn, that was a big-ass hangnail, dude. Um, you know, this, that, and whatever. And he just... He's he's a, an inspirational speaker. But he tells um, these stories that relate to um, his time and his life in Black Flag, um, which I'll, I'll circle back to that in a second. But it's actually quite a long, like, for one of those, normally the videos you'd watch if you watch it on YouTube, they're like five, six minutes. This is like 18. <laughs> but they talk about um, uh, stories relating to uh, his time in Black Flag, but as I re- Paul, the episode was on drugs, uh. and it was about taking acid. Uh. Um, but what was always so funny to me, listening to that, and you know, hearing Black Flag when I was younger and as a, a young adult and everything, is he's so like well spoken and affluent mm-hmm. now, and he'll talk about himself back then to be like, you know. I was always like, kind of like the goody goody in the group. I'm like, yeah. what? Because uh, <laughs> I've seen a lot of your fucking interviews, and I did not get that yeah. when I uh, uh, when I saw you know like the the classic one where he's talking to the like the kid who's asking questions, and he's just like, well, why are you asking me that? Yeah, You're wasting my fucking time, dude. I got uh, my 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 women and my cocaine in the back. Like, uh, quit wasting my fucking time or whatever. Uh, and then he'll just be like, uh, uh, yes, sir, and like the. <laughs> <laughs> the story's yeah. going back I'm like that just seems so fucking but I think what he means is more is to say like I was more of that than everyone else yeah you know what I mean well I think too, like I don't know it's weird cause like Henry Rollins was like for me kind of a odd figure cause like I definitely like he's definitely a good uh, orator and shit oh, yeah. but like I don't know. He's so like fucking hypocritical at times, and like yeah, he and, can like, be. I think I think there's a weird dynamic within like punk and hardcore and some shit of like like Henry Rollins and I don't know. It's a whole wormhole I could go down, but it's like kind of like mm. this whole thing of like uh, you know, it's no secret like Henry Rollins was like fucking like looking pretty jacked back in the day and like yeah. whatever and uh I don't know this whole like kind of uh just like super fucking like I don't know like machismo thing kind of where I don't know it's like I definitely respect Black Flag and whatnot but definitely. it's fucking cringy watching some of his interviews where it's like I don't know he's being like a super hard ass about like some shit to just some person fucking interviewing him. It's it's fascinating though, because I, so I, I'm going to reckon mm-hmm. you you're probably familiar with uh, Nardwar. Yeah, yeah. It, it's interesting to see like because I have seen his his interviews with Nardwar right, and uh-huh. like I've seen I think he's done like three or four throughout uh-huh. the years, and there's never one that I watched and I'm like that went well. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> With Henry Rollins, I should say. Because, you know, you see, like, Tyler, the creator, or, like, Doja Cat, or so many other people who are like, dude, you're you're fucking wild, man. That's awesome. But, um, I will say, at least, where Henry Henry Rollins, I feel like he was more standoffish than, like, overtly an asshole. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where is he more just like, yeah, why are you wasting my time? Versus, like... Hey, fuck you! I want to fuck with you. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. But seeing the ones with like like Sonic Youth uh-huh. and like other people who are like, isn't it just kind of cool to like actually fuck with interviewers uh-huh. or like Blur for that matter? Yeah. That is more of where I I see it. I'm just like, what is the actual point? Of that? Right. You know what I mean? Like it's like because they represent the man, man. Uh-huh. It's like, so what? Yeah. 
you're the fucking man. Like, you're yeah. the one fucking going to this town that everybody's paying a shit ton of money to see. Uh. It's it's so goddamn hypocritical. I don't know. But um, I guess that's the one thing I could say is at least it's not that bad. Yeah. But that doesn't make it good. Yeah. Yeah, but... I don't know. That's a whole fucking the whole fucking thing. Tangent. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll send you that video. It's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> Actually, maybe maybe when this is all over, I'll just show it to you. Huh. But um, Boss Rotten. Yeah, this shit is badass. I was going to say something completely aside. Speaking of tangents, mm-hmm. uh, just in general, because obviously you know Evan and I do this podcast. We do it every week, and it's a cool thing. But I have to tell you that I had kind of an idea uh-huh. of a podcast that if you did it, uh-huh. I would subscribe in a fucking second. <laughs> uh-huh. And that was, I would, I would fucking probably almost pay money to watch a podcast of you talking up like old, like cult horror classics uh-huh. in um, movies, obviously not music and that's not to say uh, you know it's it's really really fucking interesting i found like the two people in my life that when i think of when i think of music and who do i want to talk to about music um dependent on what it is that i want to talk about in genre and in era evan is typically more of like the non-aggressive older stuff yeah. he is a borderline encyclopedia uh, you know what I mean yeah so if it's like pre 2000 I don't know 2008 anything before that and it's non-metal mm. it seems like he knows fucking like everything there is to know in the exact opposite world uh. <laughs> I would say that that you're almost in cycle here. Mm. So if I was like, let's talk about mid 2000s extreme music mm. to now, I, I like it seems like there's hardly a fucking band that you don't know. Mm. <laughs> but all of that being said, so I mean, I say that to say uh. that you're a, a great consult for shit like this. Uh. When I'm like, dude, uh, yeah, let's talk about the history of grindcore or whatever. Uh. You know way more than I do, and you know a lot more than he does. Yeah. Um, but all of that to be said, completely non-relatedly, uh, man, I think that would be cool as shit to see you do uh, a podcast of like classic cult horror. Like, oh, you've probably never heard of this, but you should check it out, dude. Yeah, I'd say that, but it's like it's funny, dude. Like, you get schooled so often in shit like it's like funny of like i'll be like i mean yeah i'm in a horror and then i mean already there's like a million fucking horror podcasts and shit and is there uh, really oh yeah dude no it's like it's a fucking thing and uh, i mean i think like last podcast on the left which i know they kind of go all over the place but i know they're like big horror movie people i haven't even listened to the podcast but i've just been recommended it so many times but uh they're, I think they're like the biggest po- like outside maybe of Joe Rogan or I don't know who else but like they're like one of the biggest podcasts out there like a Spotify Inc. like a I think like multi-million dollar deal or something to have them exclusive but getting kind of beside the point but it's like or like I went to this one fucking like VHS like uh, I don't know little get together like exchange thing and it was kind of more horror centric like I think generally people are into the old school format uh, stuff like normally partake more in horror than I guess the average person and it's like dude you go to one of those things and you get your ass handed on a platter like whoa I thought I knew just shit about horror and it's like you know like the smallest fucking crumb like of knowledge compared to these people and it's the same thing kind of with metal it's like that's why I try to remain like metal's complicated grounded. because there's so much elitism in metal. Yeah, no, that's that's super true. Yeah. And like, it's like, cause, dude, I mean, yeah, like someone could fucking 
rip us a new asshole right now saying, oh yeah, these bands aren't fucking like grind, whatever, like, you know, someone who's super just tunnel vision and grind and like, I mean, and they'd have their point for sure. Like, I'm sure like weird. But here's the thing I would say to all of those people. Uh, if you're hearing this and you think if, if prior to thinking, hey, this is good, I'm unfamiliar with this, I like this, yeah. you think, man, this isn't fucking grindcore, this is more <laughs> like blah, 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 blah. I would invite you to take that opinion and shove it up your fucking ass. <laughs> yeah. How about that? Mm. Um, because realistically, I don't do this to be a professor of fucking grindcore yeah. or any other genre. I do it because I want people to discover good music that they might not have ever heard before. Yeah. So even if you hear this and you're like, I've heard of this, who hasn't heard of this? A lot of people. Yeah. You're not everybody. So fucking calm down yeah. and enjoy it mm -hmm. or fuck off. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, that's um, that's definitely true. And like, yeah, yeah. to me, dude, it's just like, back on your point of like elitism and shit like that it's like dude i don't know like it's i'm like, so tired of elitism yeah my god and but it's like i don't know dude i'm just like i fucking like like rock music and i mean like yeah, music dude. all over the board but it's like primarily i'm more invested in like rock stuff and it's like i don't really fucking care like i still <laughs> You know, listen to whatever Pantera or something, and Hell like yeah, other, totally. you know, like more entry level shit, and like more like you've been listening to this it's shit so, for a while. It's so fucking fascinating to say, because like it, it's similar to what was the term we had said earlier? Uh, imperfect is not bad, right? Yeah. Entry level isn't bad either. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, fucking A, dude. I'll still listen to, like, Kill Em All every once in a while. Yeah. And there is some solid fucking tracks. Yeah. No, dude, some old Metallica fucking records. Rule. I mean, there's Fuck, a reason yeah. why you get into that shit. Like, yeah, exactly. Starting out, because it's like, oh, yeah, well, this is just, like... And hands I mean, who, down a great album. Who the fuck doesn't still listen to Old Slayer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, no, I mean, I've heard South of Heaven 500 times. Yeah. I can't do 501. Huh. It's fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's just, yeah, but it's not fucking new. Uh -huh. It's not nuanced. It's not unique. It's, who fucking cares? Yeah. If it's good, just like it. And for that matter, even if you don't like it, let people like what they like. Yeah. Yeah, no, dude, that's a, such a good point, too. Like, I think yeah. there a lot of Alita shit is kind of like... My girlfriend kind of went into this, but it's like, like, there's a lot of, uh, shit that is kind of, like, targeted against, like, kids and, like, kid fandom, and it was okay. something I never really thought about much before, but it's like, it's like, you know, if a kid is more likely to enjoy, I mean, even something like, I don't know, Spice Girl, I mean, obviously that's, like, kind of dating me, yeah. but, like, it's just like, dude, let fucking like people have their thing and like kids like it's important like yeah. having accessible bands here's my, like, my only thing is this this podcast is so inappropriate that i would hope <laughs> that kids aren't watching oh it. yeah no but here's okay. the thing if if some responsible parent uh, was like you know what i i think this i think this would be okay for my uh, kids to listen to i don't yeah. think the subject matter is that bad which would be in my opinion, a pretty fucking unreasonable assumption. Because uh -huh. um, it's pretty bad from pretty often. Um, but, you know, if a parent said, hey, this is, yeah, I think this is totally fine for my kids to listen to, uh -huh. and they did, I wouldn't denounce having kid fans. It's yeah. just that it's not, in my personal opinion, uh -huh. appropriate for children. Right. Yeah. But... Yeah, I have nothing against being accessible to children by any means. I mean, that was a big thing, I think, with Eminem a lot back in the day, too. Mm -hmm. Was, you know, he would talk a lot about how, like, how kids are buying his music and they shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that was a matter so much of him saying as, I hate the kids like my music. Yeah. As much as saying, like... I know this is Hey, parents, offensive. have you heard what the <laughs> fuck I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. You shouldn't be allowing your kids yeah. to buy this, yeah. And that's kind of where I stand with it, and realistically how I think everybody should stand with it. That's a big thing, I think, in, like, um, like YouTuber culture and shit, too, is people be like, you know, all your fucking fans are kids, and it's like, huh. is that okay. the worst thing to have? Yeah. No, dude. Like, I don't know. It's like, it, and we wonder, like, I don't know, well, kids will feel like 
anxious or like, you know, whatever, nervous and shit. It's like, because there's just so much shit you're being judged on yeah. for being whatever fucking 12 and liking Metallica. And it's like, what, you don't like Slayer? Or you like Slayer? Oh, you don't well, like... you know, <clears throat> the one thing I would say, if, if for nothing else, that would be positive to say, like, if you have a large audience that is kids... Your career's probably going to last longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just statistically speaking, the kids that are fucking, you know, 15, 16 yeah. year olds old are going to live a hell of a lot longer than 60 year yeah. olds. Well, and it's like the shit, I mean, like me and you and shit, like whatever we cut our teeth on when we were younger. It's like, yeah. it's like, you know, I still love, like, most of those bands. And it's like you me grow too. up most, throughout your, you know, I don't know, like you enjoy that shit for life. And it's like something that, uh, I don't know, like maybe has some nostalgia element or something, but I don't know, it's just... Uh, All of that being said, though, mm-hmm. what is a band you listened to when you were a kid? You're like, okay, I did like it then, yeah, but uh, I won't listen to it now. Huh. Uh, <clears throat> it's a tough one, right? That is a tough one, because I can think of a lot of shit that like, I still do like. Um... <clears throat> For me, it was Nirvana. Huh. I used to love Nirvana. I can't yeah. stand them now. Damn. Um, dude, that's honestly, like, extremely... It's a solid question, right? Yeah, because it's like, I can't... The only, the only thing I could think of is, like, stuff that maybe, like, I wouldn't listen to, like, out of not agreeing with, like, social views or yeah, something. Yeah, sure. sure, sure. You know, like... I mean, I mean that's still like that's that's a take off the question. Yeah, for sure. But it's even weird then because like some shit like I still will listen to. Like maybe I won't go out and seek, you know, like to buy an album or something. But it's like, right. like I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. I'm kind of drawing a blank right now. I mean, like oh, Burzum cool. might be obvious, but even then, like I still might listen to Burzum occasionally. But like I don't seek out like, to buy the dude's music because like I think he's yeah. a piece of shit that one's tough because I didn't discover Burzum and Fogs in my 20s yeah and, yeah and I mean it's not like Burzum like I knew about them like in high school right. and shit so it's like that's not necessarily like when I was fucking five years old like I was listening to like Rage Against Machine and like I still like Rage Against Machine so like oh really they haven't <laughs> been problematic in any way <laughs> yeah no not saying like they haven't but it's like I, I mean still... I'm sure they haven't I was totally good like do you know that whole fucking shit of people commenting about like ugh I liked them before they were political like, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I yeah that's fucking stupid. Yeah. Profoundly stupid. But I have seen like the videos of like whatever fucking Trump people like and whatever dancing to fucking rage against the machine and I don't know. So. That's hilarious. Well hell. I think um I think that's just about our time, people. Yeah, people that was the, the fucking <laughs> boss rotten album. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that was the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. So we don't even have music to play out on. Mm. Um fucking hey. God, time flies when you're having fun, huh? Mm. Um, well, people, it's been real. It's been fun. Drake, thank you so much for coming in yep, and coming no, by. No problem. And I'll probably never fucking see you again because <laughs> this went so badly. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I hope you die on your drive home. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Uh, yeah. But, um, geez, what fun we have all had here today. You and me, the talking chair in the back. Um, You're just going to speak for me in the chair like that? Fucking. I mean, don't you think you've spoken enough? <laughs> yeah, true that. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Three, three empty platitudes to take the show out on. If you left your lens cap on on your film camera while taking a picture, you now legally have to throw it into the ocean. Um... If you borrow your dad's watch for a wedding, you do have to give it back, but you don't have to adjust the time if you went into daylight savings time. That's a really important one. That happens more than you would think. Um, And I know pencil shavings are yummy, 
but you probably shouldn't eat eraser shavings. They're not as good for you or as full in fiber. Yeah. It's more of a suppository, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot better having those little pink things up your stink thing. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, people, I just realized how cheap this album is. I'm buying that right fucking after yeah. this. 69 fucking, well, I mean, less than one fucking euro. That is mm -hmm. nothing. Uh, don't drink and drive. Don't smoke meth. If you have to, at least make sure it's more chemically pure so you get the better high. Drake, anything you want to say to the people while we end out? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Check out these bands. Do it. Support them. Buy their stuff. And don't not do it. Okay, bye. <laughs>